Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So last week I posted a video about GPU prices going absolutely freaking crazy. Luckily this week, the rest of the tech news, they came back from CES and they're also reporting on this. Now granted, there's no real solution to this problem. I mean, there's nothing you or I can do except just get the information out there that, hey, maybe this isn't the best time in the world to be building a PC. So like I said in the video at the beginning of the year, I want to present solutions to problems. And this is clearly going to be a problem, especially to those that want to get into PC gaming, or maybe they've been out of it for a while and they need a serious update. Uh, so I wanted to do my first ever build guide, considering the current crisis in both the RAM, the DDR4 prices and DDR3, on new on the new side anyway, but we'll go into that in a second. And of course, these ridiculous GPU prices, as they're not likely to be remedied. GPU prices will likely not be fixed until the new 12 nanometer Vegas, which may or may not even happen once those come out and replace Polaris, or maybe a 12 nanometer Polaris comes out from AMD, and until Ampere comes out from NVIDIA. Likely supply will remain relatively short on current gen GPUs because they're towards the end of their life cycle. We're coming up on two years. It's a year and a half now and we're approaching two years. So they're going to be phased out. So alrighty, I wanted to go ahead and kind of set the tone if you are new and you don't have components. And that's, I want to stress that, that this is a build guide. If you're looking for the most efficient way to spend your money on a brand new PC, starting from scratch. Now, I'm not going to go over cases and power supplies and hard drives and that kind of stuff because those prices really aren't bad right now. In fact, I'd say that they're very good because the prices of everything else is so high that they need to be lower to entice people to upgrade when they don't really need to. So they're trying to entice people to upgrade their current configurations with more aggressive pricing. So now's a really good time to get a case, power supply, coolers, things of that nature uh, because there's just not as many people building PCs because of RAM and GPUs and so on and so forth. So, alrighty guys, let's go ahead and check out what it is that I'm talking about. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to explain exactly why I chose these components specifically, other than their great value. Alrighty guys, so first up, DDR4 at this particular point is pretty much out of the equation. But DDR3, especially on the used market, is not bad. And these listings just happen to come up. Uh, these are from Canada. They're selling 8 gigabyte DDR3 1333 megahertz sticks for only $25.90. In comparison, the least expensive DDR4 8 gigabyte stick is running at $77.99. And this is also a deal, but it's much, much more than $25.90. So this is a much better value. Now you can also go for a dual channel kit of DDR3-1600, which I'd recommend for most setups. Uh, this is still eight gigabytes and that's $26 and 24 cents. So 34 cents more, you get an extra stick of RAM, you could run dual channel. Does hinder upgradability if you only have two slots on your motherboard. But at the same time, I think for most people, this is kind of a starter system that we're gonna be looking at. And by the time you need more than eight gigabytes of RAM, you'll probably upgrade the whole system at that point, and hopefully prices will be a little bit more realistic. So now that we're using DDR3 as our base, we need a DDR3 system. And for this, I would recommend going with an H67 motherboard. Now here on eBay, secondhand of course, we're looking at about 50 to $60. You have a bunch of options in there, so you can kind of pick out whichever motherboard has what features that you like. And the reason why I recommend going this route over the Haswell CPUs are because the motherboard pricing is competitive, but the CPU prices are much better on Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. So the CPU I'd recommend for this build is the Intel Core i5-3570, non-K because we're looking at a non-overclockable motherboard. And remember, this is for budget builds. This is for a new build, and this is for basically the best bang for the buck that you can get out there. Now you can get 3570s, non-K once again, which will turbo up from 3.4 gigahertz to 3.8, so it's still pretty fast, between $55 to $60. And this has been pretty regular. I've seen these going for these prices for quite a while now. And there's a lot of value to be had there. Ivy Bridge is not much slower than Haswell. Haswell's not much slower than Skylake. And Skylake 
is no slower than both Kaby Lake and Coffee Lake. So we're talking about just a few percentage points slower than Intel's newest processors. And this CPU will be able to get you 60 frames per second in all but the latest and greatest AAA titles. So if you're into older games, retro games, or if you're into uh, multiplayer games of that nature, this CPU will be able to handle 1080p 60 or even 4K 60, pretty much anything 60, and you're good to go. If you're looking for high refresh, high frame rate gaming, unfortunately, you're not even going to be able to get a GPU to really power that at this point in time. So I wouldn't really worry about it right now. This is if you're looking for a fresh build and you're trying to get the most value for your dollar. And speaking of that, what GPUs are offering the best bang for the buck today? To figure this out, I went over to Tech Power Up and I was looking at their database here. All right, so the GTX 1050 Ti's are now selling for about $200. As we can see here on eBay, even uh, the least expensive one that they have for buy now is $188.49, $192. They're about $200. So I wanted to see what we could find that would be more around its performance level and the price point that you typically would expect out of a 1050 Ti. So unfortunately, the AMD GPUs, the R9 380, the 285, even the 7970, they're just not available at any sort of reasonable price. The prices are heavily inflated on these GPUs right now, and they're just not worth it. And if you're thinking about, hey, what about the 5970? Well, that GPU is quite old at this point, and that's also a dual GPU, which I just simply do not recommend. However, looking down here, the GTX 680 and GTX 770, which these are basically the same card, this one just has higher clock speeds, uh, these are actually ranked a good bit higher. Realistically speaking, these GPUs aren't much faster than the 1050 Ti on newer titles due to the more advanced architecture of the 1050 Ti. But still, on older titles, they will actually perform faster. So if you play mostly older games, you're a retro gamer, this, these are actually even better values than a GTX 1050 Ti. The GTX 960 is also in this group here. It's a little bit faster according to Tech Power Up. But once again, realistically, since the more advanced nature of current games, so basically in newer games, the 1050 Ti will basically match the 960 or the 680 or 770 and it just depends on each title but overall they're relatively equivalent and in the same ballpark of each other so let's see where the gtx 680 lands today all right so going back to ebay because honestly this is the only place you're gonna be able to get these anymore the gtx 680 used of course running about 120 dollars uh, now, it seems like people are trying to go higher with these GPUs because of the demand. So keep an eye out for that. At $120, that's about where you want to be. And in all honesty, I've been seeing them at or around this price point pretty regularly. Moving on to the 770. This one just popped up. This is actually a really good value. $100 with $8 shipping. So $108 for a GTX 770, which is actually faster than that 680. So once again, you got to kind of browse around. You can't just go and pick one GPU and stick with it. You have to find whichever one's going to work best for you. Now, the big thing you might be thinking is, Chris, these only have two gigabytes of VRAM. Well, if you don't have a computer and you're trying to get into PC gaming, you know, this is kind of your best option dollar for dollar. This is going to give you basically GTX 1050 Ti performance at the price point you'd expect a 1050 Ti to be at, you know, somewhere around $120, $140. And two gigabytes of VRAM is pretty much designed for medium settings at this point. Anywho, so it still will work with modern games. You just have to be looking at slightly lower settings. Remember, this is a very budget build that we're looking at here. So we're not trying to push ultra settings. Like I said, the GPUs required for that now cost thousands of dollars. And then going over to the GTX 960, these are actually running at a very reasonable price. Uh, a few days ago, they were running much higher, but there are a couple of them on here at a great price. And these are all buy now. I don't look at auctions. I just look at the buy now, and then I go to lowest price, and I scroll on through. Now, don't be fooled by crap like this, okay? So there's a lot of fake stuff out there. Make sure that you buy a GPU from a reputable brand and make sure you don't accidentally get something that says parts only. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. 
Now, this card right here, the one that's uh, $100 with $13.60 shipping, that's actually a really good deal considering these are typically hovering around the $140 mark. You can obviously occasionally get yourself a good buy, you just have to keep your eyes out there. All right, so now in a world where prices are going absolutely insane, I just showed you that if you know where to look and you know what to look for, you can find great values even still. Now, granted, if you're looking for top tier performance, there really is no easy solution for this. There's very few options for you. Now, for those of us that are more mainstream and want to basically just play our games and play them fluidly and don't really care about ultra graphics versus, let's say, higher medium, there are still a lot more options out there. So it really just depends on what you're trying to do. And this system right here, the i5-3570 paired with the GTX you know, 680, 770, or GTX 960, will be able to play all modern games, 1080p, 60 hertz, and like I said, some sort of mix between high and medium settings on most games, basically console-like settings but they do run a lot faster and you will get that 60 frame per second lock. Now, easier to run games, things like Overwatch or even things like uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I don't really recommend playing, but if you want to play it or Battlefield 1 for a better example, if you want to play those games, those games are less demanding graphically. Like they look great, but they're not as graphically demanding. Pretty much anything that can run at 60 frames per second on a console, you can very easily run on any of these GPUs at greater than 60 frames per second so if you're trying to run these realistically on a budget machine you can push higher details so you might be able to push high ultra or just straight up ultra so you can get better video fidelity and keep a locked frame rate so that's the reason why i chose this system now there are alternatives now this is an old system there's not much in the way of upgrades this is something that will last probably through this console generation um, you know, until the new consoles come out with better CPUs, with Ryzen-based CPUs, I think the i5 will still be able to handle 60 frame per second gaming because most games are limited by the Jaguar cores in the consoles. So there's only so much CPU horsepower that those things can produce. So having the i5 in there it should be able to double the performance of that at any given time. Now, once again, if you wanted to upgrade to high frame rate gaming, you could do that. You could upgrade to an i7-2600 or an i7-3770, and that will net you 20 to 25% performance boost. So if you are starting to run into CPU bottlenecks, that could help alleviate that a little bit. But the upgrade path is very limited, like I said. So this might not be a platform that you really want to invest in. But for CPU, motherboard, RAM, and GPU, in today's market, that will run... Any game at 1080p 60, for the most part, PUBG is kind of a different story, but that's just crap programming there. But anyway, um, but you can play the vast majority of games. Let's, let's go with that. At, this system will only run you about $256 to get going. Of course, you still need a case. You need power supply. You need some basic stuff there. Cooler, uh, hard drive, and or SSD. But that stuff really hasn't been affected by the market right now. So Now, there is an alternative system that I'd like to propose with a better upgrade path, but it does cost a little bit more money. And that would be going with a Ryzen-based system. The reason for this is Ryzen starts at 4-core, four 4-thread, four and goes all the way on up through 8-core, 16-thread. So you have a very large upgrade path here. And AMD doesn't nullify their motherboards until a CPU architecture has run its course. So through the life of Zen, even the first generation B300 or 350, like we're looking at here, or X370 motherboards should last the entire Zen architecture until they move past that. So going with a B350 motherboard makes a lot of sense. We're looking at 55 to $65. I'd recommend this one, honestly, with the VRM heat sinks and four dim slots. But anyway, um, that would be a great option to go with because you do have memory overclocking capability and you have CPU overclocking capability on this particular motherboard. And then a strong competitor to the i5-3570 would be the Ryzen 3 1200. Now, once again, this does run at lower clock speeds, but does have greater IPC to IV bridge. So that'll kind of make up for some of it. But of course, you can then overclock this CPU under this configuration and it would easily be faster than the i5-3570 
at its locked speed. You could go ahead and pick up this Team Elite Plus dim stick that we were looking at earlier for $77. This is a pretty expensive module to put your money into. You could always upgrade later on by throwing in a second stick. And of course, you could spend more money if you wanted to, but we're trying to keep this as budget-friendly as possible. You might as well pick up the best deal that's out there, and right now that would be this particular stick of RAM. But if you're thinking about going with the Ryzen 1200, I would actually wait until February 12th when they re release the Ryzen 3 2200G. That's their four-core, four-thread CPU running at 3.5 base and 3.7 boost. So this is going to be a much faster CPU out of the box. It will also come with the Vega GPU integrated. This will also likely only have one CCX. That means one cluster of four cores. So you don't have that issue of memory bouncing back and forth. So memory speed shouldn't be as big of a deal on this GPU. On this CPU, I mean. Uh, except for the, for the graphics. Obviously, faster RAM will be very important for that. And the price point's only $99. So that is really awesome. Now, I'd recommend going with the Ryzen setup overall due to its upgradability, but the biggest difference here is going to be in the price. You're looking at only about $256 for the Intel setup versus $360-ish going with the AMD setup. Now, it is much more upgradable, but the Intel setup will have dual-channel RAM, uh, which is actually going to be better than the single-channel DDR4, and it will perform about the same as the Ryzen 1200. So we're looking at basically the same performance for about $100 less. Now the big thing is, is either way that you go, GPU wise, if you're looking at something that's more budget friendly or more mainstream, you're going to have to go with the, basically one of the three GPUs that I mentioned. I went ahead and checked again on Newegg to see where the 1050 Ti was, and it looks like prices are starting to come back to reality. Last week when I posted the last video, these were all over $200. So at $162, this is a much better value, but this is still significantly more than the $110-ish that we were showing on the other GPUs that will have similar, if not slightly better performance. So yes, these are more efficient cards and these are new, so they are worth a little bit of a premium, but how much of a premium are they really worth to you? In my opinion, until these cards drop under $150, I would probably still recommend either the 680, 770, or 960. Ultimately, it all comes down to you and your preference and what you're looking for. I just found this pretty interesting because I'm in the process of building a very budget-friendly system. I went with the i5-3570. I already had an H61 motherboard, so I didn't need to buy a motherboard. And I already had 8 gigabytes of DDR3, so I didn't have to buy those. But the prices are very, very reasonable. To my surprise, I was expecting them to be a lot higher. And then as far as the GPU goes, I was lucky right before this latest boom, I saw a uh, GTX 770 for 100 bucks, And I went ahead and I picked that up. And the reason why I decided to jump on the 770 is because I noticed that it would perform about the same, if not slightly better than a 1050 Ti, which is the performance level that I really want. That'll get me 1080p 60 gaming on the games that I want to play, which is pretty much... Everything that's not AAA titles, we're talking about your online multiplayer games, we're talking about indie games, and we're talking about retro games. So everything except for the brand new AAA titles coming out and things like PUBG, which is just horribly unoptimized, will run just fine on that GPU. So I will be bringing you guys benchmarks. So this isn't just some sort of platitude. Once I get the system built, I will show you how it performs. And in all honesty, the Ryzen setup would have been nicer, but I already had a lot of the components necessary to build the Intel system. And the fact that it can save you, if you're looking to buy a new PC, about another $100, to me, that, that's a good chunk of change considering the system's only $256. So you're looking at almost a 50% savings there, and that can be put towards something more substantial in the future, perhaps. But that's up to you guys. This is just my pick for the build of the month uh, for January 2018. I don't know if I'll do one of these monthly, but every time maybe I see a major shift or I want to put my stamp on what's the best bang for the buck, this system is going to be really tough to beat. i5-3570, 8 gigabytes of DDR3, a GTX 680, 770, or 960. It's 
going to be a tough one to beat. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and help support the good old gamer and get more tech on hands, feel free to help me out on Patreon. You know, become a patron, throw out your two cents. Uh, all my patrons out there currently, you guys have been kind of like a silent partner to the channel, and I really do appreciate that. But if you want to see specific builds, you want me to test certain hardware, feel free to go ahead and let me know on there, and I can set those up. For example, if you want to see that Ryzen system built in comparison to the, uh, you know, the i5 system that I recommended, go ahead and let me know. You can let me know in the comment section below here too. But, you know, I don't have the funds to do it. So if you guys want to help me out for as little as a dollar a month, that really does help. And I can go ahead and get this stuff on hands and we can start testing it out. Well, already guys, I hope you found this useful. If you haven't checked out uh, my previous video where I went ahead and started freaking out because I saw the GPU prices skyrocketing, feel free to check that out there. And then if you haven't already figured out that I'm not a big fan of AAA games right now, I did a video on that as well. Go ahead and check that out too. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think on those videos. But for now, that's it for me. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.